language, sexual references and adult themes. It's a Wednesday. Hope you're well. Great crowd in tonight. Anyone called Isaac in the room, just love loving being here right now. I just feel it in my balls. Great show for you tonight. Ah, oh, tonight's show, we're covering everything from Mark Latham to sexual harassment to the N-word. You know, comedy. Speaking of comedy, uh, Donald Trump. Uh, you guys heard about this guy? Yeah. <laughs> Everybody following this Trump thing? <laughs> Yesterday, the president headed to Atlanta to attend the college football national championship. And, man, they made him feel really welcome there. On the outside wall of the stadium, protesters projected the words, Fuck Trump! <laughs> <laughs> Which I think is very rude, OK? It should be Fuck President Trump. <laughs> hey, at least the players were excited to see him. All right, now, I'm not a fan of that kind of salty language. <laughs> but you do have to admire his passion. <laughs> but the attention didn't end there for Donald. And Donald Trump has suffered an embarrassing memory lapse at a college football game in the United States. The president was caught on camera appearing to forget the words of the American national anthem. As you'd expect, the video sent social media into a frenzy, critics slamming the leader of the free world for not knowing the lyrics or at least appearing like he doesn't. Oh, come on, Donald! Not knowing the words, your own national anthem? Who do you think you are? An Australian? <laughs> <laughs> it, what, it, because of the Australians, all at us rejoice. Then there's Gerd in there or something, I don't know. <laughs> Boundless planes to share? That can't be right. <laughs> Political, bit of satire, <laughs> if you don't mind. <laughs> don't know why talking to this, no one's watching. Uh, <laughs> Ooh. Well, that got grim. <laughs> now, you remember last night we discussed the speculation that Oprah Winfrey might challenge Trump for the presidency in 2020. Trump has come out and said that he would totally beat her. And then, to join the, quick to join the conversation, was sitcom star Roseanne Barr, who said she'd be a better president than both Oprah and Trump. <laughs> so, <laughs> vying for the presidency, we have Donald Trump, Oprah and Roseanne. <laughs> Vanilla Ice and DJ Jazzy Jeff are yet to break their silence. <laughs> I'm hanging out for Judge Judy. <laughs> oh, a few fans in. Now, you might not be aware of this, but Roseanne has actually run for president before. Back in 2012, she was the candidate for the Peace and Freedom Party. And you may also may not be aware of this, she didn't win. <laughs> but that's not to say Roseanne isn't qualified. At least she knows the words to the anthem. Makes him miss meatloaf, doesn't it? <laughs> I don't give a shit at this stage. Sure, put Roseanne in the White House, make a 90s sitcom star president. Why not? I'll take anyone. I'll take President Tim the Toolman Taylor. <laughs> I'll take President Urkel. <laughs> I'll even take President and Vice President Olsen twins. I don't give a shit. <laughs> the main thing is, fuck Trump. <laughs> Let's talk about porn. Any porn fans in tonight? Yeah. Fuck you, the rest of you lying. <laughs> well, popular porn site Pornhub, which I hear is a hub for porn, <laughs> they've published their top search results for 2017. The top search results on Pornhub for 2017. And we can now announce that the number one Pornhub search term of the year was Porn for Women! <laughs> porn for Women. I find that offensive. <laughs> Typical feminazi nonsense. I mean, where's all the porn for men? <laughs> I keep looking, I can't find any. 
Side note: If you search por if you search uh, porn for women, it just comes up with a picture of Chris Hemsworth surrounded by cats. <laughs> mm. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> In case you're wondering, the second and third most searched terms on Pornhub were Rick and Morty <laughs> and fidget spinners. <laughs> weird as a fidget spinner porn? Who'd be into that? I, I, it's weird. I wouldn't. Nah, not me. That's. <laughs> is it getting hot in here? Or is that. Is it, fuck, what's that doing? I don't even know where that is or why it's sticky. And I don't even. Oh, yeah, that's the good shit, baby. Yeah. Oh, fuck. No, Tom, you're at work. <laughs> We actually tried to get one of our writers to investigate fidget spinner porn, but the ABC blocked all the sites for that information. <laughs> and that writer was sent to HR to learn about inappropriate workplace behaviour. <laughs> Sorry, Nina. Good luck with the court case. <laughs> Good times. Speaking of inappropriate workplace behaviour, uh, Craig McLaughlin. Uh, <laughs> allegedly, allegedly. <laughs> what, a few fans in? OK. <laughs> We like Judge Judy and Craig McLaughlin. <laughs> Still a lot of focus on McLaughlin after allegations of sexual misconduct were made against him. He, of course, denies everything. He's even questioned the motivations of the women who have been coming forward. Craig McLaughlin has vehemently denied the allegations, saying... The allegations are baseless and they seem to be simple inventions, perhaps made for financial reasons, perhaps to gain notoriety. Mm, wow. I'm surprised he didn't describe the women as moaners. <laughs> hey, Monus. <laughs> nah, fuck you, that's funny. <laughs> Fallout for McLaughlin has certainly begun. He's been replaced by the understudy in the Adelaide production of the Rocky Horror Picture Show, and I assume that makes Craig very upset because, as he told Studio 10 back in 2015, he loves playing Dr. Frankenfurter to an almost illegal degree. <laughs> it must be so fun to do that role. It's, is a, it, it's it, Look, it is... I, it, funny enough, there was a, an off-duty copper at the show the other night and he said, Mr McLaughlin, I don't know whether to shake your hand or lock you up for the night. <laughs> <laughs> because it's the most fun you can mm. have in public without getting arrested, really. Mm. Yeah. Oh, dear. <laughs> That's an unfortunate quote. Well, I hope we find another way to have fun, Craig, and best of luck, not getting arrested. <laughs> In another blow, production for his hit TV show, The Dr Blake Mysteries, which is now at Channel 7, has been put on hold pending the police investigation. And the ABC has now pulled old episodes of Dr Blake from iView. Now, if you're a big fan of The Dr Blake Mysteries, chances are you are not watching this show. <laughs> chances are you're my mum and dad. <laughs> it's no Midsummer's Murders, that show, but it is still goddamn catnip for baby boomers. Oh, they fucking love it. Baby boomers love nothing more than curling up on the couch in one of the many properties that they own, <laughs> watching an episode of the Dr. Blake Mysteries and then going to bed to dream about their superannuation. Oh! <laughs> I love it. The Dr. Blake Mysteries is the number one baby boomer search term on Pornhub. <laughs> Are there fans in? Anybody watch the show? Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's a taste of the kind of intense drama that you can find on Dr. Blake. Despite that, the show is a massive hit. It is huge, OK? Now, we don't know what's going to happen with Craig McLaughlin and whether he'll be able to continue on with the role, but I just want to put it out there, Channel 7, I am available, OK? <laughs> come on, Channel 7, come on. The show I'm working on right now sucks. Give me a chance, come on! We can just reshoot everything that has Craig in it and whack me in there! <laughs> When Kevin Spacey, when the Kevin Spacey allegations broke, Ridley Scott just did that. He replaced him in a movie with Christopher Plummer. This could totally happen. I could be your new Dr. Blake. <laughs> and I think it would look a little something like this. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha! 
<laughs> Pretty powerful stuff. <laughs> A uh, quick plug, a bit of a plug. Tomorrow night we'll be bringing you my conversation with international comedy superstar and one-liner machine, Jimmy Carr, everybody. Yeah. Big Jimmy Carr fan. He's a lovely man. He's a very funny comedian. But that didn't stop me from asking the tough questions. Uh, all right, this is nothing personal. I just feel like I need to ask every male entertainer this question right now. Are you a sex pest? You will. <laughs> I see the way you look at me. You have opened for Louis C.K. before. You work with him. Yeah. Did he ever masturbate in front of you? Uh, no. No, he did not. Is that insulting? Um, no. <laughs> I, I didn't, uh, he didn't take it out on me. You didn't I, talk about I, it I, with why, you. Why, why didn't you check in with him and said, Louis, you're okay? I saw it coming. Okay, really? <laughs> you saw Louis CK coming. I just like a pun. I just like a pun. There's nothing the matter with that. Jimmy Carr, everybody! <laughs> you got to watch tomorrow night to see the full thing. You will enjoy it, I guarantee. Now, last night on the show, we told you about former Labour leader Mark Latham's new campaign to save Australia Day. If you missed it, take a look at the ad that he's put out there to promote his message. Okay, love, what can I get you? I'll have six kilos of sausages and three dozen lamb chops, please. Do want something tomorrow? Oh. No, 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 no. Um, this is just for the weekend. I'll be going to work tomorrow like everybody else. Well, have a good day at work then. Thank you. Save Australia Day. It'll be a sad day if we lose it. Jesus Christ. You know what else is a sad day? Today, because I had to watch that shitty ad. <laughs> now, this is me. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of Mark's position on this, but I tell you what, tonight the reporter, Greg Larson, bloody loves it. He's a huge Mark Latham fanboy, and he would love more than anything else the chance to meet Mark Latham and support this wonderful campaign. And that's why we sent Greg Larson along to the launch of the Save Australia Day campaign today in Sydney to see if maybe, just maybe, he could finally meet his beloved idol. We're just about to start the press conference. Mark Latham is going to be at this podium. He's got three flags up. This is going to be the best. I'm Mark Latham, super fan, Greg Larson. Here we go. OK, where, where did you want me just here? I'll just here, Mark. How are you doing? I'm Greg Larson. How are you doing? Yeah, yeah we said hello earlier on. Yeah. Do, yeah. Do, I, I was wondering if we could do, just for fun, remember the handshake with Howard? No, no, no. No? Not here for that. We're here for Australia All right. Day. All right, Australia Day. Yeah. That, that's, that's, that's in the category of thousands of times, okay? The sort of... Uh, oh, you get asked to do the handshake. Yeah, well, no, no, not ask, mate, but it's, oh, you know, yeah. it's, uh, it's... I didn't, I didn't mean to... I don't, like, well, I don't know what's funny. Or... I, don't, I don't know what's funny about it, but there you go. We're here to do Australia yeah. Day, so. Oh, yeah, cool. Well, we'll talk about Australia Day. So, what, what, let's have a you're, seat. You're not... Have a you're seat. not uh... I oh, don't know. No, have a seat. We're, we're just having. Oh, a you're quick... interviewing me. Yes, I'm interviewing oh, you're you. You're the yes. interviewer. Yes. But are you from ABC News or something? Where are you no, from? No, I'm from ABC Tonightly. Oh um, no. Well, sorry, I'm not. I... Mark, can, can we just have a quick interview? Just a quick back and forth. Like it's not. It's not a. No, no. You, you, you should have presented yourself as the show you were from, and you haven't. Yeah. Well, I'm okay, Greg Larson, so... and I'm from. No, no. When makes the third time you've introduced me, it's not going to help. Mark Latham thinks that I'm here to try and make fun of him, and that's absolutely not true. Um, <laughs> that's what I'm trying to say. I hate. Tonightly and the ABC and Tom Bernard. I'm on Mark's side. I'm only doing this job because I need a job. I'm going to try and get in there. I'm still going to go and see the press conference. Unless they call the fucking cops, I will never abandon Mark Latham. Dude, this is what the things that the loony left are trying to take away from our country. Ice Bobos, Lamingtons, Tim Chams. I'm going to have a sneaky little koala. Well, thanks very much for uh, coming along. And um, this is the uh, launch of our Save Australia Day campaign. Let's now have a look at the long form ad. Yes. <laughs> mummy, mummy, look what I made. I'll have six kilos of sausages. Changing Australia Day doesn't change the lives 
of Aboriginal people in remote communities. That's right. Save Australia Day. It'll be a sad day if we lose it. We might just have a second look at it, because uh, sometimes there's uh, you know, a need to take it all in. Let's have, have a second, second look at the ad. Yeah. When, with the security camera that's in her house and the sausage uh, house as well, the butcher. That's a butcher, mate. Butcher. The, you yeah. and I know about butchers. Butcher, on. yeah. I've, I, I, love, I love a sausage. Um, <laughs> with the, the security camera, so how were they installed? Are they like the Greens installing those security cameras in the houses or is that like a... Well, big fella, you don't want to take it too literally. It's an ad. It's yeah, a so... reflection of a political environment. Like how do we stop all the, you know, the Will Andersons and the Greens and the Indigenous people that want to change it? How do we stop them? Well, support our campaign and talk to your representatives and anyone of influence. Like we can say that we want it, but we've got we to gotta stop them though. Like we've got to do something to get them. Like, can we... For sure in the business of getting them with the persuasive skills and the argument and the campaign that makes a difference. Well, what if they keep going on about it though? That's what I'm saying. Because they, they keep going on about it. I can only answer your question. Thanks everyone. Well, you're growing on me. Uh, the love of the butcher shop. Uh, I love the butcher shop. I love a steak. I love a chop. I'm sure you do. Oh, Everything you're bigger than me. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a large unit. <laughs> uh, 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 I'll just grab one more lemon tin while I'll, yeah, yeah, I'll just get one more. <laughs> well, Mark's changed his tune because we've both bonded over a love of lamingtons and sausages. So he's going to let me have a bit of a one on one. We're going to have a chat. This is going to be great. Oh, I love you, Mark. Yes. <laughs> I'm trying to talk about you in a positive way. Who's in your it's show, Looney Left? Tom Ballard? No, he's Looney Left. He's Looney, Looney Left. Left. Right. There's no conservatives at the ABC. Yeah, well, you know, I told him I had um, disabilities, so that's how I got on. Um, but I... What's your disability? Well, technically, glasses are a disability. <laughs> the ABC is great. They recruit all the unfunny people. Because the left wing are talking about Australia Day, and they're like, oh, we want to change the date, we want to move the date, we want to change it to some other date. And I'll be on Twitter and I'll be like, shut the fuck up, you don't know what you're talking about, <laughs> fuck you. I think you're a lot better if you can put some arguments in favour of the 26 rather than telling people to fuck off or whatever you're saying to them, you know? Yeah, put so some argument, more... go argument and debate, substance, facts. So the facts of Australia Day is, it is good, shut up. No, I think it's more than a four word argument. We've heard three word slogans in Australia, you've now got the four word argument, it's yeah. good. Shut up. Good, you, shut up. If you went, it is good. Five. It's good. Shut up. Shut up is usually, shut up is usually a, a single word, I think. Is it? If you, type, you want it? Yeah, okay. If you were to type shut up, you'd type single So you've come back to a three word up. slogan. It's, it's contractions. Shut up. You've gone the Tony Abbott is in three words. It would be slogan. five words if you didn't have the contractions of any kind. Very good. Um, <laughs> this tonight really sounds like a really good show. Yeah. Well, it's not. How long have you been running? Um, oh, about three weeks. Hold up. <laughs> All right, thank you very okay. much. I can't do the Howard handshake, but I'll do the man. Oh, this is. Oh, this is. Hang on, hang on. Uh, you're not. You're not a hashtag me too, are you? No, I'm not. A, I'm not a me too. Oh. I'm not a me too. Oh, I'm not a me too. Let's get it in close. Yeah. You know, I just smile. I'm not going to kiss you, but I'll hug you. Yeah, this is not too good. I feel. You feel the vibe? I can feel the vibe. You feel the vibe? I can feel the vibe. Oh, this is so good. who I am, everybody. Yeah. That was glorious. <laughs> On the topic of ads, actually, L'Oreal ran an ad during the Golden Globes broadcast earlier in the week, and it was a little bit odd. I don't know if you saw it, right? In the ad, you got a mysterious woman there in a black dress, all, all very glamorous, getting ready for a big night, and then, oh my God, it turns out it was Winona Ryder! Now, the ad sort of lightly touched on the whole Me Too movement. Winona was wearing a black dress, you know, it was kind of in that general realm. But then the nod to the campaign becomes a bit more cynical when you look at the ad's tag, okay? Everyone loves a comeback. Damaged hair deserves one too. Yes, power to women, you are more than just sexual objects. Also, damaged hair is as bad as a broken career. <laughs> We stand with you, women. Now sort your disgusting hair out, you freaks. <laughs> it's not the first time a brand has sort of clumsily entered the social justice arena. Of course, we all remember Pepsi co-opting imagery from Black Lives Matter for an ad. Remember that? For marriage equality, Nike released a rainbow shoe and Coca-Cola somehow tied itself to women's right to drive in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> <laughs> 
Mmm, feministy. <laughs> this is what capitalism does all the time, right? It'll use anything in the cultural zeitgeist to sell you shit. L'Oreal came close to cashing in on the Me Too movement, but really, can you blame them? Me Too is so hot right now. It's only a matter of time before other brands get on board. Anyway, stick around. Tonight, we'll be right back after these messages from our sponsors. The city is your playground. Leave the past behind. Your shoes are on the right side of history. Oh, he's coming. <laughs> the all-new Corolla. The perfect indulgence to go with your female empowerment. Ben and Jerry's black dress and macadamia. <laughs> Introducing Me Too Barbie, the first Barbie that's more than just an outfit. Just look at all these accessories that say that. Barbie Me Too backpack, Barbie Me Too jacket, Barbie Me Too t-shirt, Barbie Me Too capsule, etc. All these clothes, like the patriarchy, must go. <laughs> that's right, even men can be part of Me Too. Uh, we got black jackets, black t-shirts, and black flannels. That's right, black checked with black. All these at low, low prices. How low? Well, not Weinstein low. <laughs> ah, just say hashtag me too for a 40% discount. At lows. <laughs> my space. It's my own. My secret. For you, for me, for women. <laughs> Moi aussi, the scent of respectful distance. And we're back! <laughs> Finally tonight on the show, we head to Queensland. Hey, you know what they say about Queensland? Beautiful one day, but also Bob Catter lives there. <laughs> now, Queensland is a lovely part of our country, of course, but it does have a bit of a reputation for sometimes being a little bit problematic, a little bit behind the times, a little bit... Queensland. <laughs> for example, up until August of last year, there were seven creeks in Queensland with the N-word in their name. Very groovy. <laughs> Those names and some other similarly offensive ones are gone now after several complaints were made. And that's good, right? That is a good thing that suggests that maybe we are finally prepared to face up to some darker parts of our history and make some changes. Well, late last year, we sent tonight the reporter and whitest woman alive, Bridie Cottle, to the sunshine slash N-word state to find out more. Most of you probably have a fond memory of visiting your favourite places in Queensland as a kid. The Big Pineapple. Movie World, Pauline Hanson's Fish and Chip Shop. Mm, this place, the name of which I will not be saying. And unfortunately, this place isn't on its own. There's this one and many other racist place names all around Australia. Until 2008, there was even a stand in a sports stadium in Toowoomba called this. Queensland recently took the step of discontinuing 10 of these offensively named places. So I went to visit some before they're gone forever and we only know about racism from history books and all the racist things that still happen all the time. In here is the government department where sites get assessed for renaming. I went there to find out exactly what's defined as offensive these days. Turns out they are unable on this occasion to provide talent for a television interview. Almost like it's an uncomfortable topic to discuss. So instead, I found Bill Kitson, a retired surveyor who knows heaps about really old maps. Oh, and also place names. Can you maybe talk us through the process of how in Australian history places got their names? Bill said lots of interesting stuff, but frankly he was too smart for me, so here's the gist. Ignoring requests from the Surveyor General to use Indigenous names, the locals took matters into their own hands. And we know how that turned out. Now that Queensland's got a submission process to suggest new names for these sites, I thought I'd run my ideas past the expert. Brotherhood Creek. 
<laughs> yeah, stony silence. I think uh, that's a good that's a good sign. Uh, mount acceptance. Yes, there's, there's, there, I think there are a couple of mount acceptances. I think. Yeah. Really? I think so. Yeah. I was born to be a surveyor. Woke Hill. Who was woke? <laughs> We're all woke these days, aren't we? <laughs> when you have a name that, you know, has the N-word in it or something really offensive, how has it stuck? Probably because it appears on one map produced at a certain right. date. When they revise the map, it just continues just like continued. that. It's part of history. And that history is pretty grim. Some of these places are named after the atrocities that occurred there, including one that local historian Dr Tim Bottoms knew all about. Basically, it's called Nigger's Bounce. The hand brothers, Frank and William Han, they had a, an outstation. And on that outstation, everyone got along great. Oh, wait, no, no, I, I read that wrong. Everyone did not get along great. The Gajala people didn't have any food or guns, so when they went to get rations and ammunition, the Han brothers showed up, armed to the teeth, and opened fire. Turns out, when a body hits the ground, it bounces. It might be an idea to keep the name, just simply because it's so challenging that it reminds people right. of what went on. I hit a snag the next morning when I set off to see some of these places myself. It's hard to ask directions for a place you can't say the name of. Siri, give me directions to... Nowhere. <laughs> Don't mind. Mm, never mind. <sighs> Siri, give me directions to N-Word Creek. I could not find any places matching Nigger Creek. <gasps> Turns out that creek has already been renamed, which is great. But um, luckily, there are still a few other racist place names around, so I changed course to go and find them. Behind me, you can see a rock with a light on it. That's called N-word Heads. Yeah, that's its real name with the N-word in it. I wondered if anybody has asked the local Indigenous elders about their views on it all. I met with Alf Joyce and Victor Mond, who are traditional owners in the area. I'm 76 now, and to me, it doesn't make any difference to me, because to me, it's just that rock out there. I think it is offensive, you know? I mean, some people get really up, up, up about it, you know, yeah. and, and rave on about it a lot, but there's other words that are worse than nigger, I think. If you could change your names, what would you want to change them to? Our ancestors probably did have a name for this place, and they yeah. did have a name for the rock out there. We don't know. This has all been pretty intense, so I've decided to take a quick pit stop at the picturesque Mount Wheeler. Finally, a name I can say on air. Mount Wheeler. I love wheels. Everybody loves wheels. <laughs> Bridie Cuddle, everybody. Give it up. I know it's uncomfortable, but we got to talk about it. And a big shout out to all our viewers watching from those locations. <laughs> That's all for tonight. Thanks so much for watching our show. Stick around on ABC Comedy for Asian Provocateur. We'll be back tomorrow night at 9pm with Jimmy Carr. Join us then. Good night.